A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. As communities respond to climate change by creating green spaces, an unfortunate side effect of this effort could be the creation of new homes and opportunities for mosquitoes, one of the planet's more lethal pests. They kill over a million people a year, sicken millions more, and thrive in water and warmth. Today's speaker, medical entomologist Cameron Webb, explains how mosquitoes respond to new environments and lays out what we can all do to reduce the public health risks associated with them. Now, mosquitoes are the deadliest animals on the planet. About half a million people die every year because of mosquito bite. Diseases such as malaria and dengue. How can we manage these risks um, and move forward and try to live in a greener city and not create opportunities for mosquitoes? So I spend my summers sloshing about in wetlands, wrangling mosquitoes. The work I do now, together with that of scientists around the country, is trying to work out how we can stop people getting sick because of mosquito bites. It requires us to understand uh, the role mosquitoes have in our local environment and how we can change our cities so that we're greening our cities, we're mitigating those impacts of climate change, but at the same time not creating opportunities for mosquitoes. All of these mosquitoes essentially need two things. They need blood and they need water. So I'll get to the blood in a little while, but let me talk to you about why water is really important for mosquitoes. The humble mozzie is a really frail and fragile creature. It looks like it'll fall apart in a strong breeze. It's hard to imagine these are the danger, most dangerous animals on the planet. But these animals kind of rely on water. They've got an amazing life cycle that starts in the water. So eggs are laid in and around sources of water, and then when it rains or the tides come into the wetlands, these eggs hatch, and out of these eggs hatch these worm-like uh, larvae that swim around in the water. Maybe you've seen them in puddles or your pot plant sources, or maybe as I did as a child, uh, if you're a bit slow to clean your backyard swimming pool when the warmer weather arrives, all of a sudden you can see these mosquitoes swimming around at the top of the water. During summer, it might only take a week or so for them to emerge from, those, from that water and start flying around. They only live for a few weeks, but during that time, they can bite a lot of people. To get those eggs, they need blood. Mosquitoes need blood. That's why they bite. It's only the female mosquito that bites, and she needs that protein hit in her blood to develop her eggs. They can live quite happily on plant juices and sugars most of the time, but they really need that blood to develop eggs. And the animals they can get that blood from can be incredibly varied, from cows and kangaroos to birds to frogs, but also us. But it's also important to remember that Mosquitoes, when they bite, can not only create an itchy red lump on our skin, they can transmit pathogens that make us sick. But mosquitoes aren't flying around transferring droplets of infected blood from person to person. These are not dirty syringes. They're much more complicated organisms. And so the mosquitoes themselves have to become infected with the pathogen before they can pass that on to us. And when it comes to pathogen transmission, not all mosquitoes are created equal. It's why it's really important to understand mosquitoes because even though we have dozens of mosquitoes here in Sydney that could transmit something like Ross River virus, there are no mosquitoes currently in Sydney that can transmit the pathogens that cause more serious diseases, things like dengue, chikungunya, or Zika. Let's hope it stays that way. So what does a green city look like for a mosquito? So first of all, there are trees that provide shade, protection from wind and sun, it provides these kind of protected human little areas where mosquitoes can take refuge. The longer mosquitoes live, the more people they bite, the more eggs they lay. But it's not so much the plants, but the water they need, which is really critical for mosquitoes. So in a green city, we have water tanks. We build wetlands. We've got green walls and frog ponds. We've got bioretention basins. We've got rain gardens. All of these structures that might be designed to store and recycle water in and around our cities and suburbs could be used by mosquitoes. So how can we design a city so that mosquitoes aren't quick to adapt to these types of environments? Wherever there's water, mosquitoes will lay eggs. So how do you create a wetland that's not home to mosquitoes? 
Well, one of the really interesting pieces of research we've found in recent years is that problematic mosquito populations often seem to be associated with wetlands of poor health, wetlands that have more stagnant water, wetlands that don't have enough predators to eat the mosquitoes. So it's a tantalising idea that if you can create a wetland that's healthier, it has more water flow, it has a greater level of biodiversity, you can actually keep mosquito populations down. If you provide habitats for the animals that eat mosquitoes, the birds, the bats, the fish, the frogs, the spiders, the, any number of aquatic insects that love munching on mosquitoes, rather than being a problem, mosquitoes, they're not going to disappear. We're not going to get rid of mosquitoes completely, but if they're in a, a more balanced place in the ecosystem, Maybe we'll have fewer pest impacts, and more importantly, maybe we'll see less mosquito-borne disease. So what about our backyards? We all want to keep our backyards healthy. We want to have create a great opportunity for our plants and our pets and the local wildlife. One effective way to do that is installing a rainwater tank. The problem is rainwater tanks can be a great source from, from very serious mosquitoes. And as we do a more a better job of creating these opportunities like rainwater tanks in our backyards, maybe we're creating, that, creating an opportunity for these mosquitoes to move in. So what can our authorities do about uh, reducing the mosquitoes associated with these, uh, these greening cities that we're dealing with? There's a role for our local authorities to consider mosquitoes when they're building wetlands, creating wastewater recycling schemes, um, regulating the installation of rainwater tanks. Because these are dynamic systems. It's not just about how you design them and build them, but it's how you maintain them. What about us? There's a role for local government, for our local authorities, but how can we help protect our families and our friends from the impact of mosquitoes associated with a greening city? I'm going to leave you with three tips that can help you stop the bite of mosquitoes and the buzz of mosquitoes this summer. First of all, don't create opportunities for mosquitoes in your backyard. Anything that traps water after rainfall will be a source of mosquitoes. So tip out, cover up, or remove these water holding containers in your backyards. Screen your rainwater tanks. Clean your gutters and your drains. Reduce that standing water that mosquitoes love so much around our homes. Secondly, insect repellents are a safe and effective way to avoid mosquito bites. Make sure you apply it as a nice, even coat over all exposed areas of skin. Don't put it on like perfume. A dab here or there is not going to provide protection. Unless you've got complete cover, those mosquitoes will find that gap in your repellent and bite. Lastly, a way that you might be able to stop the buzz of mosquitoes. Why not just switching on a fan? We know that operating a fan in our bedroom can help reduce those mosquitoes that come in and buzz around our ears at night. It disperses the smells and the temperatures around our body that attracts them. It might even make them, it might make it a bit harder for that mozzie to fly around and find us as well. So finally, I want to leave you with thought. We may hate mosquitoes. And I understand, I don't want to convert you into loving these bloodsuckers, but we need to understand them. Because if we can't understand the diversity of mosquitoes and their relationships with the environments we're creating in our greening cities, it's going to become a much greater struggle to kind of reduce the burden of disease that might come with them. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in New South Wales, Australia. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Parramatta. Want to listen to more TEDx Talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.